Very Puzzling by Cynthia Platt. Cody, Alo, Sandy, Rhea, and Peck were visiting a puzzle room. It's like a tour of the world, remarked Cody. If we solve puzzles from different countries, we win a prize, Sandy replied. There was just one problem. They were unsure where to begin. What should we do first? Rhea asked. Everything, Peck replied. The friends all spread out to start different puzzles, but they were unable to make any progress by themselves. There's too much disorder. Maybe we should work together, Rhea suggested. Let's start at the beginning, Peck said. He flew to the very first puzzle at the front of the room. Everyone followed him to the unsolved puzzle. Peck peeked into the lock on Mount Fuji to get a preview of what was inside. There's a clue in here, Peck said. Let's unlock this by sorting through the keys. They each took some keys and tried and retried them in the lock. I've got it, Ala called and held up a riddle. The blocks are over here, Alo said. He showed them instructions to build an Egyptian pyramid. They almost got to the top, but Cody dislodged a block and knocked it over. It's okay, we can rebuild it, Rhea reassured her. When they did, they found another clue. The map above the bookshelf had a pin pointing to India. Looks like we should find a book about something in India, Rhea said. Soon enough, Peck uncovered a book about one of its landmarks, the Taj Mahal. Whoa, he said in disbelief. There's another clue inside this glass ball. What does water's deep mean? Sandy asked. They were unsure until they found five pools of water shaped like the Great Lakes. As a precaution, Cody tested the water to see how deep it was. Then she stuck her hand into one lake after another. The other glass ball was in Lake Superior. A pan flute and a sheet of music sat next to a model of Machu Picchu in Peru. I've got this, Sandy told them. She played the pan flute but missed some notes at first, so she replayed them. A panel opened in the model. Inside were their prizes, five globe-shaped trophies. We did it! These are unbelievable, Cody exclaimed. It's no puzzle that we make such a great team, Alo cheered. The Recipe by Cynthia Platt Cody heard that Rhea had been a little down since her favorite plant wilted. She wanted to help cheer her friend up, so Cody invited Rhea over later that day. Then she had an even better idea. She'd make Rhea a card and some brownies. Rhea was arriving at midday, so Cody had to get baking. It was a big undertaking, but Cody knew Rhea loved brownies. Cody asked her dad to help with the oven, then she read the recipe and gathered the ingredients. Cody got a mixing bowl, measuring cups, and spoons. At first, Cody thought she understood the recipe, but then she worried she had misread it. Did one cup of flour mean filling up to the top of the cup? Or should she pile it as high as she could? Overfilling the cup looked right to Cody, so she put in lots of flour and sugar. Next, she added the cocoa powder, but that didn't seem like enough. The recipe must have miscalculated how much cocoa was needed. Cody added more to make it extra chocolatey. Cody checked the recipe again. She was already midway through. While adding the water, she spilled some extra into the mix. Then she cracked four eggs midair before realizing that she'd misread the recipe. The brownies only needed three eggs. The mixture looked very watery, so Cody added in more flour, sugar, and cocoa. Now it looked too thick. Cody worried that she had misjudged the recipe, but it was too late. Rhea would be there soon. Rhea arrived just as the brownies were done. I made these for you. Cody said as she handed Rhea the card. Wow, thank you. Rhea couldn't wait to try the brownies and dug right in. She made a face as she took a bite. Cody took a bite too, and it tasted funny. The edges were too hard. The middle was undercooked. I guess I made a mistake with the recipe, Cody admitted. That's okay, Rhea laughed. This was still an awesome surprise. Cody laughed too. Cheering Rhea up was what she wanted, after all. 